Hey, this is the franchise Shane Douglas, ECW's original world heavyweight champion. Right now, you're watching the number one wrestling podcast on all of Long Island, Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and Pharaoh. Dad. The Monty and the Pharaoh show. The Monty and the Pharaoh. To so the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, what a rush. We've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, MJ in the house. And I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we go going to rock it. All right, welcome back to another episode of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh, only seen here at Village Connection Radio, live from Rockstar Studios, a special Saturday edition. At the helm is none other than the owner of this illustrious station, Mr. Jim Savalli. Well, good morning. Jim or good afternoon. To the right is the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Happy Saturday. And most importantly is WWE Hall of Famer, pro wrestling superstar, iconic human being, Mr. Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. You know, I always wanted to meet him. Who's Tony that? Atlas? Tony oh, Atlas? He's so awesome. You'd love him. I think he's a prick. <laughs> really? Oh, no way, God. man. He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Good for nothing. Good for nothing. <laughs> Boy, well, we're going to find out in this okay. interview, all right? Yeah, let's find out. So what we usually do is uh, Farrow's going to do his little shtick, and then we're going we're gonna to rock and roll with you, sir. You sound good to me. All Sounds right. great. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have at it our esteemed introduction for our esteemed guest. Born April 23rd, 1954, Anthony White, better known by his ring name, Tony Atlas. American bodybuilder, powerlifter, professional wrestler, who's held multiple titles and championships in each of these sports. He's also known by his bodybuilding title, Mr. USA, a distinction he has earned three times. Also known as the Black Superman, as well as an alter ego named Saba Simba. F you, Vince. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, he returned as an on. I have to. Uh, F you, uh, Vince. He returned as an on screen manager for WWE, which I personally loved, appearing on its now defunct ECW brand. And of course, he re signed with WWE with a Legends deal in mid 2012. Residence. Where are you living at, sir? I live in Auburn, Maine. Okay, all right. Not far from here. No. All right. Multiple names, as I've mentioned yeah, previously. You shouldn't, have really, you shouldn't have really told the Pharaoh that, man, because you might just be visiting your home. I'm a bit of a too close. The only thing about Maine, once you go there, you don't want to leave. Really? I like professional wrestlers' feet. Nice, You're Dude, digging the cold better. weather? Oh, sorry. It's no worse than New York. Or Chicago. Well, that's why I'm not yeah, a big fan of New York thing. anymore. But, but no, it's it, it, it just the freedom. You got more freedom there. No, no traffic. Nice. You can buy whatever you want to buy. Fresh air. It, fresh air. What, nice. what does Tony out. Atlas nowadays do for recreation? Tony Atlas uh, is a direct support. I work with mentally challenged adults. Mm. I'm also is a, a, a personal trainer 
at the Auburn YMCA. I got a, a youth program there, and I work with uh, a young troubled kids. I do a lot of motivation speaking to uh, uh, to kids because uh, there's a lot of things that uh, that I was taught when I was young that we don't put into care. Whatever, my mother said you reap what you sow. If you plant apples, you're not gonna get oranges. In my generation, there was two things that was planted in me. It was planted, just like you plant a seed in the ground. One was pledge allegiance to the flag every morning in school. I made a pledge to serve and honor my country. And then me, you know, not putting everything away about it. Me, I one day just decided I want to go to L.A. and get my face stepped on and not go to Philly. That's what me and S.D. were talking about at the Hall of Fame. They were going to put the belt on me and S.D. that night that we were going to beat Fuji and Saida. Really? I now? decided I don't want to wrestle. I'm tired. I want to have a vacation. This girl told me she got some new tennis shoes. You and S.D. were about to be the first. You believe this? This is unbelievable. S.D. would have been SD the first. S.D. must wa wanted to smack you senseless. He forgave me. He forgave <laughs> okay. me. He talked about it in the Hall of oh Fame. Oh, my God. And that's when Rocket took SD place. It was SD before Rocket. SD first delivered Joe. And I took away SD first break. Wow. Can I get your thoughts Over on that? Over a pair of tennis shoes. Over a pair of Over tennis, tennis shoes. shoes. A girl called me and said, I just bought these shoes. Oh, oh, I can't man. wait to show them when you be home. Right. And, and like, I had this real, real strong foot fetish. You with right. toes, man. What's up with not, you? No, I, I got a, I got a, a, a shoe fetish. Shoe fetish. Okay. Not a foot fetish. Okay. There's a, a difference. Hold on. Interesting. Uh, 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 right. skin -ski so when you, when you come back and SD now knows he, that, 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 that you he finally had you, right away he forgave it? No, it oh, took a while. It, it took a while, but, but later on, me and him, we started talking. And he knew that I was crazy. You know, I, I, I was all messed up, you know, messed let, with let me, let me Let me ask you a quick question. They, they put... They put the belts around you and Johnson, right. which yeah. in the day was huge. Yeah. I, I could remember that day like it was yesterday, both yeah. of you guys. What was your problem with uh, Rocky Johnson? Because the rumor has it is you guys just couldn't get along and they had to, they had well, to take a Well, me and Rocky you know? talked later. That's what I thought at first. And I say some horrible things about Rocky that I take back now. But once me and Rocky was able to sit down and talk. But what was the original beef? What was the problem? Well... Me and Rocket never had a chance to, to bond. Now, think about it. We had the belt for almost a year, and we teamed up three times. Yeah. As Why? You, Why, that by what the SD way? you say all the time. He said, y'all the only guys they put the belt on, and they never promoted it. Why do you think that was? Senior put the belt on us. Oh, Senior made okay. that decision. Junior took it off. So Junior just didn't like it and didn't use it. Well, Junior it. was not in charge of 85. Senior died gotcha. in 85. Gotcha. We won the belt in 82. Gotcha. Understood. Right. Wow. Yeah. So it senior, sounds to me like Junior senior, just didn't like it and it wasn't let it his, sit. Well, it wasn't his creation. That's why when you go in, when I went back, Vince Junior never you never booked Tony Adams. I was doing the the WWF then the same thing I was doing no work in fact I did less and the owner at that time said I have to make an example of you of all the people see so I, I learned long time ago that that people said no it don't matter yeah they do yeah yeah they do to, not to everybody but in certain situations it, it, it is done because it just something about human nature, you know, it in all of us. You know, we got this certain human nature that we pull for one side more than we pull. If you're Democrat, you pull more for a Democrat and then nobody on the Democrat side could do anything wrong and everything that go wrong is the other guy's fault and I got nothing to do with it, even though I'm working too, you know, I'm there, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm part of it, but I don't got nothing to do with it. Well, what the hell are you doing there if you ain't got no, nothing to do nothing, you know. Go home if you ain't got nothing, you know. If you ain't involved in nothing, what are you there for? But anyway, and then the, the same, you know, on the other side. So wrestling is pretty much the same way. When the crap hit the ceiling, you know, if you're not connected with, in with the right people, or if you're not packing the houses, then the guys that pack the houses, you know, then you can get away with what they, what they want. The guy that don't pack the house, he ain't going to get away with nothing. And... So on. Um, yeah, but you know, at that time, you and Johnson are tag team champions, which is, by the way, one of the most important matches you, in the history of wrestling. But, but if you look at all the matches during that time we had that belt that mm -hmm. we had together, SD Joe told me something. He was laughing. He said, You know, 
y'all two guys are the first two guys I seen that had that belt. They didn't make no money with it. You go back through the computer. I ask anybody out there. They look mm-hmm. at all the matches me and Rocky had to defend that belt. It's hard to find. Because we had nothing. Yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> Except I, when we won it, we but lost. It. Rocky kind of blames you for no showing no, events well, and doing well, all no, right. It wasn't so much. It wasn't so much that you know. Uh, it was. Uh, he said you wouldn't go to the smaller towns, you know. So he, you know, yeah. maybe he thinks well, that's there not was true. money to be drawn. Well, well, no, that 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 is not true. Uh, why would I? Come back and screw up. Why would I do that? I gotta be a complete idiot. That's, I, I, that's Rocky Johnson no, talking. I have I, no idea, right? And, like I said, it don't read the other guy. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. No matter who you talk to, when you read my book, one thing that Scott Teal told me that that he liked about my book, he said, "Tony, you the first person that I would write a book for like this." He said, "Why is that?" This my statement in my book. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people helped Tony Atlas to get on top. Thousands of people helped Tony to get on top. Only one person helped Tony to fall to the bottom, Tony Atlas himself. Mm -hmm. I'm the captain of my own ship. When I came back, uh, because I I came back uh, from from California uh, and went back to work, they put the, the title on me and Rocket. I tried everything in my power to make that thing work. I didn't miss no show. Chief J. Strongboat bagged them, bagged them to put SD on the show with us to make sure I get to the show. Rocky was a transportationer. Mm-hmm. I had to depend on Rocky for a ride. He was the man with the wheel. Right. I just flew in from California and went to work. I ain't had a car. Mm-hmm. See? So everybody want to blame their mistakes on Tony Atlas. It's easy to do to blame somebody else for a decision you make. I, I take full responsibility for everything I ever did, but I'm not going to own up to something that I didn't do. No, I didn't miss any shows. They got records, you know. You look it all up on the computer. Everything's on the computer. If I didn't miss a show, how come my name there if I wasn't there? Hey, you know, that's a good point. That's right. You know they got records of all this stuff, man. You can get out and tell all the lies you want today. But they got a thing out here today with what is good about the internet called Facts Check. Adonis, Ventura, Patera, Patera. Patera. Yeah. And then they drop, it just makes no, let, yeah. let me ask you what this. Is you, uh, you and the soul man, you end up dropping the belts to Adonis and Murdoch. Do you share any thoughts on Adonis? A lot of guys have come through and they say Adonis, he wasn't a very good guy. Yeah, we Adonis was the most disrespectful. Oh, here we go. Most degenerate. Get out. Individual I have met in my life. In your life, really? Now, what, why? What, what did he? What was he just rude he to you? Had, was all he hell was or? rude, obnoxious, racist. Hell of a hell of a Is hell he of racist. A, uh, or just an equal opportunity asshole. You got that right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't so much. Uh, Fair um, enough. So so much race because all of us, whether we want to realize or not, we got a little bit of racism in us. Sure. Uh, Jimmy Snooker and Nancy Argentina. Did you know anything that went on in that situation? I wasn't there. I wasn't Were you there. close with Snooker at all? Oh, did maybe you? me. Oh, I, well, I love Jimbo. I still like him. I, I like Jimbo a, a, a whole lot. Well, what did you hear about the situation? How's that? I'm not asking whether you know. Just what did you hear, and did Jimmy ever talk to you about anything? No, I mean, Jimmy never discussed that. You know, you know we really never did uh, discuss about what happened with him and that girl. I, I knew that they was... Uh, we're dating for a while, and uh, my what, what, what was she? My I think my second or third wife mm-hmm. was used to date him, you know. But uh, 
there was probably about maybe 20 different stories went out on that about what, what happened with that girl. But I think the a guy called me, he supposed to be what called a DA guy mm-hmm. from the district attorney. Right. <laughs> probably, you know, when they want to reopen the case stuff, sure. he, he called me, he asked me a uh, 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 question about it. But uh, he said that what the court papers say and what Jimmy said in his book don't match. And that's why they're going to wanted to reopen the, the case. So that's going to be kind of like an OJ mystery in the rest of the world for many, many years. Cause the only person that really know what happened in that room was Jimmy and that girl. Mm. I don't, nobody else was around when it happened. And they're both gone. And they're both gone. Yep. So, you know, you're going to hear 101 story of speculation. I, I even repeated some of the speculation, you know, which I stopped doing because, it, I, you know, my wife, you know, God bless her. She said, you got to stop repeating what people say when you, you wasn't there, you know, because well, in shit. the wrestling business, I, I keep forgetting myself that guys love to exaggerate. They, they want to be a part of it. <laughs> I think everybody likes to exaggerate, man. Everybody do that? Everybody. It's not just wrestling. Okay. Yeah. And, and so I, I got to be careful not to exaggerate and, and put myself into something just to be part of well, it. Well, I don't want you to speculate, but you're kind of yeah. blowing this next question out. Uh, well, what, are your thoughts anyway. on the, what are your thoughts on the Benoit murders? Now, that's another one. See, I was in Maine. That was in Texas. That's another one that I used to speculate on, and I stopped speculating. Speak of, on. No more speculating. <laughs> no more speculation. <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody's a freaking psychologist now. This before a while, Tony Atlas thought he was. You know, you can find a hundred one tapes of me saying that. Yeah, you know, I know what I'm about. Well, I, you know, I went to Lee. You know, <laughs> Lee Junior High School, and I almost passed the sixth grade. But I know this, and if, and I've have done that. I have done that, and I got to stop doing that. So no more speculating. No more speculating. I mean, I. Well, right now he won't, but I'll probably, tomorrow I'll probably speculate again. Well, but as Tony Farrow, you're not speculating. No, Tony Farrow don't speculate. All right, that's, uh, all, that's all I want to know. You heard it here. <laughs> Let's not t- the Farrow, baby. Look, he's got the Farrow. Oh, nice. I like that. Interaction between you and the iconic uh, Bruno Sammartino. Did you have any interaction oh, with yeah, him? I, yeah, yeah. Get any mean, stories to tell? Well, Bruno and me, we was uh, when we was around each other. It wasn't about no wrestling. It about lifting. Yeah, me and Bruno, we were about that. We were about lifting them weights, you know. Hey, kid, uh, I, I hear you did. You broke my record today because I went. <laughs> I was in uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, me, Tito Santana. Uh, I remember Axe Demolition all of them was at the gym. We were all in there working out at the gym uh, upstairs there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I bench pressed 565 that day. Wow. And uh, Bruno heard about it. So Bruno come back to, oh, kid, I hear you just broke my racket. And I, I said, what was your racket? He said, uh, 560. He said, it's only about five pounds. Just five pounds. You know, only five pounds. You know. but, but you broke my record only five pounds. You know, yeah. He pat me on the back. I love Bruno. So, but I love Bruno, man. Bruno was the type of guy uh, that he, you know, he he looked like a wrestler. He he, he looked the part. He he was a wrestler. You know, he, he was legitimate. That's what I was saying about when you got a guy sitting in the office writing a strip uh, for you. And you got to go out and play something that you never had no experience at in your entire life. So people are not stupid. People know that this don't something is not. It don't click. It's just something there don't click. It's kind of like I was with uh, McIntyre. Uh, uh, Drew McIntyre. Uh, yeah, Drew McIntyre uh, last night. The what, what he's doing that fits him. You know, it, it have to things have to fit. I, I'm on my watching this. Uh, Tell me about Hercules and the, the, the modern one, the, mm-hmm. the modern lives, you know, yep. when he reality of Hercules. Then I look at that guy, you know, he ain't got no muscles. <laughs> now, when you see Hercules, no muscles. 
Well, and with, we have Zena for a while. Remember that Zena? Yeah, yeah, sure, that sure. Guy, what okay, you thought about it. They had the long hair yeah, and stuff. Yeah. He, ain't look, he, you know, he don't look like no Hercules, but they got it. They paint him money to play something that he it don't fit. In the older days, if you meet Ric Flair, Ric Flair is the same inside, outside, in bed, out of bed. You know, that's Flair. His in, that's his inner character, and we was able to do that. We were able to release that inner character right. in us. And you can't create. I can't make you what you not. You know, I can't make him what he's not. I can't make him what he's not. I can't make nobody. If you're not that, you just ain't that. You know, mm -hmm. that's why when they put belts on certain people, I, I look, I say, come on now. I ain't going to call no name, but come on now. Yeah, go ahead. You could call some names. No, come on. Yeah, I ain't going to Should do I that. call him for you? No, because my. I, the Kofi person, Kingston? The, well, <laughs> is that, you know, but. Finn Balor? <laughs> you rough. I can keep going. You rough. <laughs> You rough on a man. Yeah. He rough on By the way, this is only the views of Monty from Monty and Tony Farrow. Tony Farrow had, is not agreeing with what I'm saying. I'm just throwing names out there. I, I don't agree with you. I just said that I, I, another thing that I learned in the business, you know, the man is not here to defend himself. So, you know, I, I kind of feel, that, you know. But regardless, what I'm saying is that it got to fit. You know, pe people get tired of being screwed. All right, Tommy Wildfire Rich. Love him to death. I got a lot of... He broke my neck, though. And this is a funny story. Uh, that's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> we were driving back one night, and, and Tommy had this bad habit. If you're sitting behind him in a car, he would turn all the freaking way around and looking at you going down the highway. <laughs> and he used to do that all the freaking time. This one time on them crooked roads up in Ohio, he he done that crazy stuff, and he went up. He, he always told me the same thing. Relax, I got it, you know. And but this one time he did it. It's always that one time. You don't y'all do it twice to learn your lesson. Only once now. We went off the side of the road. Now there's a lot of people involved in this story. We went off the side of the road. <clears throat> the car flipped over. The hood was bent all the way down to the door knob. I was sleep in the back, so. I was wrenched down into the seat like this. Oof. And the top, the hood was on my head like this. The other guys were the, the Johnny Rich, uh, the other guy that was, uh, 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 what was they, the son, hot dang it. Oh, he was a referee. Oh, I can't think of the poor kid name right now. But, but anyway, let me tell a story. If your name pop up, I'll throw it out there. But anyway, <clears throat> so they, they were waiting for the jaws of death to get me out. Wow. Uh, the Sheik was riding with Ole Anderson, the Iron Sheik. He said, who's who's down there? And then they said, Tony Atlas, he's trapped in the car. And you know, gas is leaking and smoking. And they said, they, he's going to get burned alive if somebody don't get him out. The Sheik ran down and ripped the door off. Yep, yep. Under that moment, of, ripped the freaking ass the Sheik next time you see him. That's like Hulk strength. Well, you could do that with... Cause they went for the door, but he came and pulled the door, got the wow. door open, and the sheik, the Aaron Sheik, got me out the car mm. before he caught on fire. Wow, the Aaron Sheik. So I'll be dead now if it wasn't for sheik. So you're That's forever, in, you're I, forever I, in debt I, to sheik. I don't never say anything bad about sheik, cause I see how the sheik are all in time and need. He didn't even think, and only told him, say he's a baby face, which means good guy. Mm. Sheik is healed. He said, if you go down there, I'm gonna fire you. 
Wow. But the sheik just ran and he, and he pulled it, got the door open, got me out, got me up on the day. So I, got, I went to the hospital there. So Can I'm you there. believe that? Tony is about to die and the promoter's telling the other guy, you can't break kayfabe. Yeah. Don't go down there. Yes. Yeah. Holy honest cow. God truth. Honest, honest God truth. Honest God truth. This was Ole Anderson with Georgia Championship Wrestling there. But uh, anyway, because uh, that TV we were going to Ohio then. We just started going to Ohio and Wheeling, West Virginia. Anyway, they put me in the hospital. I was there for about maybe three days. I was unconscious. I don't know how long I was there. But anyway, they when I got out, they put a halo on me. Right. On my head. Mm -hmm. They go, they wires. I look like Frankenstein. You know? <laughs> 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 oh, they said, oh, I'll take that fucking thing off. Take that fucking thing off. He said, I don't want the people to see you like 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 this. He said, he said I got an anger. I got a freaking anger for you. So he had me to take the halo off. Put my elbow up on the turnbuckle, hold my chin like this, and Buzz saw you. Uh -huh. Supposed to come in with a two by four. That's supposed to be gimmick. You know, yeah, to saw yeah, some of yeah. it, and then you know put stuff around that so you don't see it, and whack me in the head and break the two by four in my head. Buzz, who was always but let's say you were okay with Buzz doing that. I mean, that's not, a scary situation well, in itself. I didn't know him then. We didn't know each other. You got to realize we young. I didn't know him a from Apple Butter. I didn't know he gonna come in with the uh, with the two by four hit me in the head with it. But Buzz was so stoned that morning, he forgot to saw it a little bit. Mm. So it was a, nothing wrong with that two by four. And I got a, just coming out the hospital with this halo, and I'm up here just like this, and they come in here, and he hit me. Well, I love it. This is incredible. My good friend here asked me to do some of the guys that have been on the Monte and Farrell show, and I try my dumbbell best to catch everybody's character. If you notice, Tony Atlas taking up all the room as usual. Of course, with the biggest head. Yeah, I got the biggest head. There, you know. Or, or I'm sorry, yeah. the biggest body, but the smallest yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, the smallest <laughs> head, but that's fit Tony Atlas. <laughs> that's Tony Atlas, the biggest body and the smallest head. Been like that for years. But then I try to put some of my friends in, and, and uh, you know, this is a fantastic show. You know, I, I, I was telling the guys earlier. There are just as many wrestlers that have been on this program that have been in the WWF or WWE. This is an amazing, amazing uh, thing they got going here. You know, a lot of us guys, like some of the guys that are that I travel with and wrestle with, like Bundy. We were talking about Bundy not too long ago. I was sitting beside him. Now Bundy is no longer here. But the Pharaoh could say that, that, that at one time y'all watched the Martin and the Pharaoh show. And you saw him because of what these guys do. So this is a great thing, uh, you guys, that what, what they do. I mean, how, how can you sit and hear in-depth stuff about Tony Atlas if it wasn't for the Marty and Farrell show? You know, how, how can you hear stuff about the Aaron Sheet, Tito Santana, Greg Valentine? I mean, every wrestler on here had, had lived a different lifestyle, a different story, different territory, different nationality, Spanish, black, Caucasian, Puerto Rican, you know, Indian. You know, you got, like, it's like a freaking United Nation here. You know, everybody got a different upbringing, a different story, a different experience. And they all have been on a modern and fair show. So, I don't know if y'all appreciate what y'all seen, but to me, you know, I knew a lot of these guys, like Andre the Giant. And I, I knew guys that are, that have been on this show that's no longer here to tell their stories anymore. So, if you get a chance to see one of us guys, Take advantage of it. We ain't going to be here forever. We're the last of the Mohegans. Mm -hmm. the, the end of the wrestlers. We was not sports entertainers. We was wrestlers. And we wouldn't put nobody over that couldn't beat us in real life. We try to not screw the people and show the people something that we were not. The Tony Atlas you've seen on TV is the same Tony Atlas you're going to meet in person. The, the Ric Flair you meet on TV is the same Ric Flair you're going to meet in person. Bundy was Bundy up until he died. Razor Ramon, we immediately stayed Razor Ramon. They, they, they was not character. The character was the person themselves.